Natural hair rules that we are no longer doing. So about a week ago, I posted on my TikTok some things that I just no longer do anymore. And I posted three of them and I got some really interesting responses back. So I thought it would be fun to just go over what everybody had to say regarding some old school natural hair rules that we are just no longer following. Again, I'm using the words rules lightly because these are just suggestions. There really are no rules. Things are just kind of like best hair care practices. I think it's just natural that like as time goes by and we learn more about natural hair care, we learn more about our hair in general. There's more technology there. Hair products get better there's just some things that we're just not gonna have to need to do anymore so i think that's probably like some of the reasons why i wouldn't say that i was ever like completely no poo only i had the tea tree tinkle from trader joe's i'd use a russell clay or i'm like a mud wash y'all remember the terra essentials but i did only wash my hair like once a month and so i wash my hair at least once a week now i definitely love shampoo <laughs> So do no heat anything like I would freak out even using the blow dryer on cool I was so scared that my natural hair was just gonna burn off and shrivel into oblivion <laughs> If I used any type of heat, but even before I went to cosmetology school, I was blow drying my hair more I was using the Revere. So I was kind of inching out of that mindset anyway. I used to like literally just air dry my hair for every single style. But these days, child, look, I, I have no time. I'm, I am I am blow drying, sis. I am Revering. I am. That's actually the first thing I did when I was transitioning back into using heat was the hooded dryer was kind of like my first foray into that. And I remember I was like so excited. I even made like a whole video about it. Now I'm blow drying drying, I'm flat ironing, I'm revering, I'm doing all the things because we don't have time. <laughs> Once I learned the things that I needed to learn, it was game over. And that was definitely from cosmetology school. I'm all about the color. I know you guys can't tell right now, but I did color like the bottom of my hair purple. I went over it a little bit. If you were following me during my cosmetology journey, you probably saw like my under color. The thing is, is that you just want to be very gentle. If you are going to be coloring your hair and bleaching your hair, you just want to make sure that your hair is in as strong of a condition prior to doing that as possible. And once you do it, of course, you just wanna make sure that you take care of it. You just have to do it responsibly and just don't go overboard and you'll be fine. Mindy of Mal says my hair is bleached and dyed, but healthy because I'm taking care of it. Exactly, as long as you take care of it. There's so much that we have access to these days where it's not something that we have to really be afraid of. Remember, back in the day, we had nothing for natural hair. So it was like, if we messed up our hair, that was it. Like we were using juices and berries. <laughs> and like, if we messed it up, like that was it. Cause we were on our own. So we're not on our own anymore, which is really great. So we can really experience and have fun. My, my trifling ass ain't never had no hair rules. My washing goes so dry and stiff it's a wash and stay. Stop it. Stop it. We've all got wash and stays, okay? Zany band, deaf pre-pooing. I just wash my hair more frequently and it cut down my wash day into tangle in half. Yeah, exactly. I still love pre-poos. I just haven't found them as necessary. Like the same thing with her. I really wash my hair minimum once a week now. So it's like my hair is really moisturized. I use great hair products, melon and hair Oh snap, you didn't know? What can I say? My hair is very moisturized and healthy and I don't really, I don't feel the need to go in with like this pre-poo treatment anymore. I can just jump into the shower and get to work and jump back. Out. So I think pre-pooing again was during this time when like a lot of the hair products they weren't giving our hair as much moisture as we needed that we had to like go in first with the conditioner and do all these special things and now like we're really getting that moisture in every single step of the wash day process. Pre-pooing is still great. I don't think it hurts. I just don't think that if, especially if you're short on time it's something that you don't need to do. So we can dye our hair now bleach safe. Could you explain this some more? You can do anything you want. Again there's no natural hair rules. These are just suggestions. You know the natural hair community was trying to figure out how to care for our hair and we were doing it by ourselves so we were trying to minimize the amount of damage that one could do to your hair since we were having to take care of it ourselves i wouldn't say that bleach is safe i just think that find a hairstylist that's going to not fry your hair with bleach <laughs> Go to a professional and go to a professional that knows what they're doing. You want to see other people who have hair type like you that they have actually done a good job on and like their st hair still looks good a month down the road. I have given up spending all day washing and conditioning my hair in multiple in and out of the shower steps. I use a melanin line and I still make flaxy gel sticking to what works. Feel you, I don't spend all day washing my hair either, sis. Nah. I do still do in and out of the shower. I like to deep condition out of the shower and I just don't want to be in the shower for an hour, but I don't deep condition every single time. I also don't follow the finger detangle only rule. I'll prep my hair first but using a detangler brush saves a lot of time. Literally I cannot just go straight to my hair with a brush or comb. Like I never have been able to do that. I don't 
only finger detangle but coils in my hair are so tight that if i literally just went straight into my hair with a brush or a comb i would rip out so much of my hair so i envy y'all who do not have to finger detangle like for me it's not even like i have options <laughs> like i have to finger detangle my hair even when i am going in with a brush and a comb and i'll only do that if i'm straightening my hair or blow drying my hair so that the blow dryer or the brush or whatever i'm using can get through my hair when i do that i have to finger detangle my hair first so my steps usually go finger detangle then wide tooth comb and then my felicia leatherwood detangling brush but when i'm not straightening my hair i am finger detangle only sis like i am in the shower i will finger detangle finger 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 Mm, feels good we done we done we done we done and there was a time when i was only using detangler brushes the combs and trying to like kind of rush through the process and i just got so many broken hairs doing that so now i'm like nah let's not rush the process your detangler felt like magic in my hair today i currently have no product in my hair and it's moisturized and soft <laughs> that's got nothing to do with the video but i wanted to brag so the plumping deep conditioner she loves it i love that for you I tossed all oils out of my regimen my wash and goes work awesome on damp hair and not soaking wet hair my hair has been thriving since. Took me 10 years to figure it out, but I'm finally here. I love that. Wow, all oils out of my regimen. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. I'm wondering if some of her hair products, like the shampoo and etc., have like oils in the shampoos and the conditioners because I am surprised that there's no oils at all. I love oils, obviously, but I have even personally myself reduced using oil in every single step. I usually use oils like on a style like today to reduce the frizz. I've even reduced the amount of styling products that I use. Like I don't even need to use that many styling products. I tried it all with my hair until I found it's just best to keep it simple. A lot of times we just go overboard for no reason. I do think it's great to keep it simple. I don't think that there was no reason that we went overboard. Again, I feel like it was just because natural hair was not popular back then. Nobody wanted to teach us how to do our hair. And so it wasn't necessarily going overboard. It was really just us trying to figure out how best to care for our hair. This texture that we had never worked with before, that there's literally no information about anywhere and that we can't just go someplace and learn about it. So I think it was a lot of trial and error and through that trial and error I think it was really great that we were able to figure out what works what doesn't and also now because of all the trial and error we've got all these amazing products and hair tools that can help us keep it simple now like back in the day we we weren't able to keep it simple because that was a luxury that we just couldn't afford we didn't have any tools or hair products that would allow us to keep it simple we were mixing things and we were making things out of cloths and we, we were doing the most because that's all we could do was the most like there was no other option so I I definitely agree keeping it simple but I don't like how just because we found a better way today we rag on the old ways that we did things I just I think that we can honor both ways I think we can say hey this is great that we don't do this anymore or that we don't have to do this anymore without putting down all the work it took for us to get here today you know we wouldn't be here today we wouldn't have all the knowledge that we have in order to keep it simple if we did not go through all that trial and error so <laughs> you mean you mean our trial <laughs> You mean our Terra Essentials era? Because I was definitely buying that aloe vera juice because your vids, haha. Now I just use your whole melanin, melanin hair care line. That's super sweet. I think the main thing I did was I never listened to the stylists when they say that all homemade products are not good for the hair. Although that might be true, I found out it's based on hair type, person, how you take care of your hair, etc. I still make shea mango butter and flaxseed gel and different hair masks that stylists don't like people using. That's not all I use, but it's helped when I I love to mix DIY with store bought, and obviously I like to make my own products as well through melanin hair care. But I think it just comes down to like you really got to do what works for you whatever is getting you through your work week whatever is allowing you to feel good about yourself and is healthy for your hair you just got to do what works for you because everyone's different not everyone has time to wash their hair three times a week and some people need protective styles because they have a bus busy lifestyle they're caring for kids etc like we we got to stop the judging i think it's ridiculous to tell people that there is a set way to do things because that's assuming that everybody has the same lifestyle everybody has the same income and the same access to products or services and, and we don't sometimes we gotta just go for the yogurt in the fridge like and I will say now that I am a stylist no <laughs> like there's nothing in the licensed cosmetology coursework that says that using homemade products is bad for your hair. In fact, there was a whole week at my school where we shared DIY solutions for the hair and the skin so is the problem the DIY products or is the problem people doing things themselves at home? Hmm. 
because I tried not trimming, cutting my hair, bad idea, laugh a lot. It def splits up the shaft over time. Now I get trimmed at least twice a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't wanna, probably don't wanna skip his. That's a suggestion. Unless you are somebody who like rolls your ends up all year, you don't wanna skip your trims. Especially if you're somebody who's trying to grow your hair, those splits will ruin your hair shaft for sure. Three more because there's so many here, but Itaro has another one that I think is great. I ditched the don't touch your hair rule. While I don't style my hair every day, I'm constantly touching my hair to see what state it's in and making adjustments important. Fair, love that. I don't have a whole day routine. 45 minutes and done. Mwah! You ain't got time. And also the more you care for your hair throughout the week, the less time your wash day is going to take. It just stay consistent and we don't have to be in there making it a wash day. Can we change it to wash hour? Less is best and consistency is key. And I think that is the moral of the story is that we just all figured out finally that simplicity is key, less is best. But let's not knock all the effort, the research, the trial and error that it took to get to these realizations. We would not be able to have less is best without trial and error. I am very happy that we're all here. We really had to like try everything in order to innovate. Can our hair thrive if we don't do these things? Yes, no. And then we slowly over time simplify and make the process easier. And I'm here for it. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I just thought it was an interesting topic. Let me know in the comments which of these you relate to and I will see you in the next one.